let's talk about Disallow Growth Models. Disallow Growth Model analyzes the change in the level of output in economy over time, which resulted in the change of the population growth rate and the saving rate. First, we're gonna start discussing the relationship between capital and output. Have you ever wondered that when the capital increased, why did the result come out with a smaller and smaller increase in output? Because of the law of diminishing return, which states that for each new input of capital, there are less and less output are produced. In addition, we focus on the effect of output on capital accumulation. This effect proceeds in two steps. First step is the relationship between output and investment. The second step is investment and capital accumulation. The relationship between output and investment. If we assume that the economy is closed, that means investment is equal to savings. According to the savings, we can separate into categories. First one is private savings, and the second one is public savings. For public savings, come from tax subtracted by government spending. Then we assume that we have balanced government budget. Which means capital D or government spending is equal to capital T or tax. So we get investment equal to savings. Savings become investment when bank lend out money to investor for the business investment. Additionally, the saving come from saving late or small s multiplied by the income or the output. If people have more income, they will save more, so it will lead to increase in investment. Now, we can put the investment to our graph in the form of per worker. According to the law of diminishing return, we can imply that the first unit of capital per worker, they will get high productive and lead to increasing in investment. If they increase large and larger unit of capital, they will get a smaller output and investment. The second step is investment and capital accumulation. Have you ever wondered why the value of the object is not last long forever? The example is when you buy a new car. One year later, you want to sell it. The value of your car will be decreased by the time. As the same as capital phase with depreciation. To explain how the capital accumulation, let's put the capital per worker in the horizontal axis and the depreciation per worker on the vertical axis. Then the relation will be moving like this. The depreciation will increase at constant rate as capital increases. That means having more capital will lead to more depreciation. Now, we combine the investment and depreciation in the same graph. The depreciation will constantly grow at the same rate as capital stock grow. We have three special cases for this graph. First case, investment exceeds than depreciation. It will get the positive change in capital per worker. Second case, when the investment and depreciation are interaction. This situation is called the steady state level of capital. This point will lead to go of understanding the solo growth model. At the steady state, investment exactly equal to depreciation then the level of capital stock will remain the same. Let's imagine the bucket full of water with a leak spot. We compare the water as the capital stock, filling the water to be at investment, and the leak spot of water as the depreciation. 
If we fill the water at the same amount as water leakage, then the level of water will be remain the same. In another word, if we increase the investment at the same rate as depreciation, we will also get the same remain rate of capital stock. Third case, we will move to the right of the graph. It's clearly to say that the investment is less than the depreciation. So in this case, we get the negative change in capital per worker. We hope that this video will help you to get a better understanding of the basic solo growth model. Thank you!